welcome back to another video. So today in this video, we are going to color fur. I put a post up in my Facebook group and I asked everyone for some video requests. And one of the most requested things on that post were that I do a fur tutorial without the grayscale. Now I have done several tutorials on how to color fur and a couple of them have been on grayscale and I guess that's why it's been so highly requested that I do it on the white paper. So I have Botanicum and I have some color here. I'm using Prismacolors and I have put the colors together and tested them out and they come together beautifully. We're going to color a bunny today and I'm going to show you how to bring all of the colors together to create a beautiful fur effect. And we're going to try to make it look as realistic as we possibly can. If you check the description box down below, you'll find links down there for my email list, my Facebook group, my Etsy shop, and my Patreon if you'd like to support me there. I also now have channel membership. If you would like to find more information out about that, you can click the join button down below the video. So I chose a page and we're going to color this adorable little bunny here. And I do have some ideas. I don't know exactly how it's going to turn out, but we're going to see what happens. So I did pull a Google image up and so I'm looking at it on my computer. I always suggest when you are trying to color something like fur or color an animal or even color anything at all, pull up a picture that is realistic and try to apply that to your coloring because it really, really helps. It also provides you with a little bit of inspiration if you're kind of lost and you really don't know what colors to use. Now I did use that image and I pulled some colors from my Prisma color set and I don't know if I'm going to use all of these colors or not but I like to have plenty of colors and then I can sort of just pick and choose from them as I go through and start laying the colors down on the page and start to really know exactly what I'm doing. I do have another couple of colors laying off to the side and I think I'm going to bring those in at the end but for now these are the colors that I have. I have 20% French gray, my white. I always like to use white when I'm coloring fur, no matter what color combination I'm using. I have my 70% French gray, my light umber, my 30% warm gray, and my 10% cool gray. Now I have a combination of colors here that are several different grays, and then I always like to add in a brown, some kind of brown, not always the light umber, but just something that is going to create a variation between the colors because when you're laying the colors down and you're trying to create realistic looking fur you want there to be a difference in the colors so that each stroke really stands out as well as a difference in the values of the colors that would be why I have two French grays one being 20% and one being 70% and then I decided to go with the 30% warm gray and the 10% cool gray because those are two different shades of gray now when I start coloring the bunny I am going to try to add a little bit of pink up here in the ears. And that would naturally be what you would see on a bunny. They do have a little bit of that mauvey pink color or maybe a little bit of peach up in here and I want to make this bunny look as realistic as I possibly can. To start coloring this bunny I'm going to start with my darkest shade that I have in all of the colors here but I want to go with the gray and not the brown. So I'm going to take my 70% French gray and when you're coloring fur you want to make sure that you have a really nice sharp tip on your pencil. <laughs> Now I will say that the Prisma colors do get worn down pretty quickly because they are a very soft pencil. If you want to use something like Polychromos, you can do that too and just follow exactly what I'm doing in the tutorial and try to match up some of the colors. But I like using Prisma colors. If you would like to see me do a tutorial with the Polychromos, I can do that as well. Just let me know in the comments below. But something like a Polychromos or any other harder pencil will be a little bit easier for you to draw the strokes that you need to draw when you're coloring fur. So I'm going to turn my book this way because as you can see here on this image the lines are going in this direction and so I want to be able to take my 70% French gray and start drawing some strokes and I'm really just using the artwork in this case. I'm going to go over all the areas here where the artist has drawn in those strokes. And I'm going to use those as a guide. And then also anywhere I see something laying over the bunny, I'm going to come into those areas and I'm going to add a little bit of my darker color there as well. Now as I'm doing these strokes, you're going to see me turn my pencil because I want to keep that sharp tip on my pencil. 
Now I'm going to turn it the other way and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start doing the same thing on this side, just making me strokes. And then I'm going to make some strokes of my own. Now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to start in on the ears and I'm going to do the other ear. And coloring fur is actually pretty easy because you're just going back and forth and making several different strokes. And once you start coming in with the other colors and you have a combination of colors, you're really going to be able to see those strokes quite a bit more. Now right here on the face of the bunny, what I really want is for there to be a lot of white coming up right here from his nose and his mouth. And so I'm gonna leave that alone for now. So I'm just trying to get into all of these areas where I have all the flowers laying over the bunny. Trying not to miss anything. And then right here, I do want to add a little bit of pink, like I said earlier. So I'm not gonna come in here and do anything quite yet. I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab my pink and start on that area there. So I went and grabbed Nectar, and I also have Deco Pink. I think this is Deco Pink. It's PC 1014. I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna start adding some of this color to the inside of the ear. And I'm also going to add a little bit of the Deco Pink. So I want the nectar to be a little bit darker, and then I'm gonna put a little bit more of the deco pink towards the inside. Then I'm gonna grab my 70% French gray, and I'm going to connect this color on both sides to meet the areas where I put the nectar. And then of course I'm gonna go over these little pieces of fur that are here as well. And then right in here where his ear is meeting the other part of the ear, I wanna make sure that is quite a bit darker just to add a bit of dimension so that we could show the two separate areas. And that'll help it to look a little bit more realistic. So I still have my 70% French gray and I'm just gonna go over this outside area here. And again, this is just to create a little bit more dimension. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So now I'm just going up and down with my pencil trying to create more strokes and this is just going to act as a second layer. And I'm gonna do the same thing all through here. Now right under the neck under here, I want the colors to be quite a bit lighter, maybe even possibly more white. And then I'm gonna go along here on the edge doing the same thing. And I'm trying to sort of hide the lines that were originally on there. I'm using them as a guide, but in the end I don't want them to show. Now I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna do the same thing to this year. So now I need to sharpen my pencil because the tip of my pencil is starting to get a little bit dull. And when you're coloring fur, you don't ever want a dull pencil because you won't be able to see the strokes of the fur. So I think we're starting to get a really good base here. So right here, I went outside the lines just a little bit too much trying to create those strokes. So I have my mono eraser and I'm just trying to pull some of that color up. Now I know a lot of you always worry about making mistakes on your coloring pages. Don't ever think that something is a mistake. Just continue with your coloring and it will fix itself in the end. So now it's time to start coming in with some other colors and I think I'm gonna add some of my 30% warm gray. So I did sharpen it first. I am just going to use it to come into these areas where I laid the other color and this is just going to add a little bit more color and spread those strokes out just a little bit. This color is quite a bit lighter, but it's not the lightest color that we're gonna be using. So I wanna be able to see the strokes, but I still want the strokes of my pencils to look rather soft. And the combination of these two colors is just going to be really pretty, and it's going to help to create a little bit of dimension in that fur. I'm gonna come up here to the ear and I'm gonna do the same thing, just adding a few more strokes. And then the other ear. Essentially, I'm just pulling that color up just a little bit. And it's also adding quite a few more strokes and I'm just going up and down, up and down. It's super, super easy once you get the hang of it. And I wanna come in with a little bit of white here. So I'm gonna pull this color down just a little bit so I could start to come in with my much lighter colors. And here I'm gonna pull the color up quite a bit. And then I'm gonna come down into the body of the bunny. And again, here I want a lot of white right under his neck. So I'm just pulling this color down a little bit to get ready to do that. And technically, when I say white, I really mean a much lighter shade of gray 
and I'm going to use that in combination with the white to create that white. And let me come up in here and just spread some of this color out just a little bit. And when you're coloring fur, it's always good to use the white of the paper as well. So now I have my 20% French gray and I'm just gonna come in here and continue to make those strokes. And you can see that this is a completely different shade than the warm gray that I was just using, but it all blends together very nicely. And the whole key here is just to continue to add these layers while still making those strokes. And I have found that coloring fur is actually pretty easy and it's actually rather quick. You're not necessarily putting down all of those layers and layers and layers because you want to still be able to see those strokes. And so it takes a lot less layers as if you were coloring something like one of these flowers on this page or maybe a leaf or something like that. Now I'm gonna to come to my next lightest color which is the 10% cool gray and I'm gonna start adding this color where I wanted to see a lot of white. Now if you're following this tutorial and you want to use the warm gray you can use the warm gray to do this as well. The cool gray is probably gonna have a little bit more blue in it. Okay so I decided to go ahead and switch to the 10% warm gray because I think I think that the warm gray will look a little bit better. I think the cool gray maybe had just a little bit too much of a blue hue to it. And don't ever be afraid to switch out your colors or change your mind when you're coloring. That's the whole fun in it. Now down here where I wanted to see quite a bit of white, I'm going to make sure I come in here and pull all of these strokes here closer into the center. So I have my white Prismacolor and I really want a whole lot of white right in here. So I'm gonna go over this area with the white and then here under the eye, I want quite a bit of white as well. And you can't really see it a whole lot right now where I laid the white, but as I come in and I start laying more layers down with these other colors, you'll start to see it a lot more. And I do have other colors that I'm gonna be bringing in as well. So this is my 10% warm gray, and I'm just continuing to make more and more strokes. And you're gonna see when I come in with the brown what a difference it's gonna make. So I went back to the darkest color that I'm using, the 70% French gray, and I'm gonna start coming in here and trying to add a lot more depth and dimension and create a lot more fur so that it looks much more realistic. And again, I'm just going in an up and down motion. And in those areas where the artist added those lines, I'm making sure that I come in and I go over those lines even more. And then here where the neck meets the body, I want to make sure that I get quite a bit of color in there. Now I am moving closer into the face and pulling some of these colors up. I only want the white right here up under the eye, so I'm gonna start coming in with some other colors and changing this up just a bit. And I am going much lighter here with my pencil because I just want to create some very faint strokes. And I'm gonna continue turning my pencil. Look at what a difference that has made. And I'm still keeping this area here very white or much lighter than the other areas. Now I'm gonna come down in here and start adding some lighter strokes, but I still wanna keep a lot of this in here white. I just wanna see a few little pieces of fur throughout this area mixed in with the lighter colors. So now I wanna come up here and I wanna do a little something different with the ear and just add a lot more depth in here because I don't feel like I have laid enough layers down in this area here. And then over here on this side of the ear where I laid the pink, I want there to be a whole lot more depth and dimension all in these areas and I want to create that separation there so I'm just going to add this color all through here to show the separation between this part and this part. Now I have nectar and I'm just going to pull some of this color through just a little bit, brighten it up and I'm going to also grab the deco pink and basically I'm just adding another layer here just to finish this off. So now I have the light umber and I'm gonna start adding some of this right on top of the other colors and this is going to make a pretty big difference because now I'm creating a contrast between some of these colors. So this color is just going to really make those strokes show up a whole lot more and you could probably see what a huge difference this is making because now we have a difference in the colors. So it's really making those strokes stand out a lot more. Now I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this ear and I'm still leaving a lot of that white of the paper. 
So I'm gonna come over here on this part of the ear and I'm gonna go over these lines where the artist had originally made them and blend some of this color in here right into where I laid that pink. I'm trying to make it look just a little bit more realistic. And here where the one part of the ear is meeting the other part of the ear, I'm just gonna go in a circular motion and pull some of this color out, blending that darker French gray right into the pink or the nectar rather. Now I have my white and I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna go over all of the areas that I wanted to look a lot lighter or all of the areas that I actually want to look white. So over here in the face and under the eye, actually around a lot of the eye. So here on the top and then on the bottom and then here above the nose and the mouth. And I'm sort of at the same time using this as a burnisher and I'm going up and down. I don't really want to burnish all of the colors though together completely because I still have another color to come back with, but I want the white to show up in all of the areas where I wanted to keep it a little bit whiter. I'm gonna come up here and do the same thing to the ear. And this is really helping some of those strokes to really stand out and just going in between them. And this paper in this book is really, really good. So even though I'm coming in and I'm doing this now, I could still come back and add more strokes and create more fur if I wanted to. But I think our bunny is looking really, really cute so far and he looks pretty realistic. Now I have the bronze and I wanna add a little bit of bronze in here just to make more of a difference in the color and really help the fur to stand out. But this color is really pretty. I very rarely use it, so I thought it would be fun to pull it out and use it for the fur, just to create a little bit more contrast between the colors. And I think it looks really pretty, but I definitely think this color is what our little bunny needed. Look how cute he is. This color blends beautifully into these other colors that I chose. And when it comes to coloring fur, it's really all about the colors that you choose because if you choose the right colors, it definitely makes coloring fur a whole lot easier. I'm trying to emphasize the white here around his eyes just a little bit more. So I think I forgot to come in here with my white, but I want this to look really white right here where the neck is meeting the other part of the body. And then I'm gonna come back in here where I laid that bronze and I'm just gonna pull this in just a bit. So one last time I'm gonna come back with my 70% French gray and I'm just going to finish him off. <laughs> So I think that last layer really did it and you can really see the fur effect on my bunny. I really love the way that he turned out. I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. Again, this video was so highly requested. <laughs> y'all are always asking me how to color fur. So here it is on white paper and I hope you enjoyed it. So if you do try this tutorial in this coloring book or another coloring book, I would love to see it. Share it in my Facebook group. Feel free to tag me. Everything that you've seen me use in this video will be linked in the description box below. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.